What is going on guys? Before we jump into today's video, I just want to let you guys know and apologize. I don't know what happened, but when I was filming this, I didn't realize whether it was the lighting around the car or whatever it was, but the picture quality seems to have a lot of noise in it that I can't seem to get rid of, and I'm sorry that it kind of looks like that in the video. Uh, again, I apologize. I still hope you enjoy today's video, and in the next ones, I'm sure, you know, we're going to have this issue fixed. So, sorry about that guys. Uh, enjoy today's video. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Frank. I'm back here again at lovely Porsche South Shore located here in Freeport. In today's video, I'm bringing you the best electric car currently on the market, I would say. This right here is a 2022 Porsche Taycan Turbo S Wagon. Let's get into the video. Alright guys, so let's talk EVs before we get into the video. So EVs have been around since about the mid 1800s. Um, obviously there's been a lot of advances since then, but the first crude electric cars were kind of created about 1830s to the 1850s, um, with the first fully produced one coming out in about 1890. So obviously since then there's been a lot of advances in electric cars. Here's one of them. Um, however, the first mass-produced car made by a massive manufacturer was GM, creating the EV1, a picture of it right there, uh, in the late 90s. And then Honda kind of followed suit with that, creating again yet another um, electric vehicle right there with the name of it, because I can't think of it off the top of my head. Anyway, since then, EV cars have not really taken off. It's been a market that's been rather untouched for a while until Tesla came along and started the pot a little bit. They never really took off, no one really wanted them, and honestly the technology wasn't there at the time for them. So it wasn't seen as a practical use um, to be in a car and making one fully electric. So in about 2008, that's when Tesla had created the Roadster. They had about 500 units of those, um, and that was kind of the first mass-produced specialty uh, electric car, if you will, that uh, had a little bit more traction. Um, and then it wouldn't be until 2012 when the Model S came by and that's when it really took off. So in the beginning, in the early years of Tesla, it didn't do as well, but they were still there and making sales. Tesla has been the one that's kind of taken the electric car market and turned it up about 10 times since their, you know, debut. So since then, there's been tons of new electric cars that have come out. There's been, you know, every car maker you could think of has one. We have the new Rolls Royce now has one. Um, Porsche has them. Obviously, Tesla was kind of the main creator that shook everything with them. Um, Honda, GM, Toyota, Nissan, every car major you can think of really has jumped on the EV bandwagon, if you will, and uh, been in some kind of an effort to to make one. In my honesty, it's... it's you, you can, you do... It's not the greatest thing in the world. I don't want an EV car. I don't like them. However, this one that I have right next to me is definitely a special one compared to all of those other ones out there. So let's get into the reason why you guys clicked on the video and let's go over this 2022 Porsche Taycan. We're going to start on the exterior car. Again, just like my previous video, this car is a paint to sample Porsche. So this one is called the Superior Red Metallic. It is again a $11,000 paint option. Um, it is paint to sample and it's called Red Metallic. But as you can see here, it looks like dark purple. So I'm not really sure what their reasoning was on uh, doing that. But it's still a gorgeous color nonetheless. Worth $11,500. That's for you guys to decide. Um, depends, I guess, on everyone's budget and how much they really want the car. So again, this is a 2022. It is not 2023. So there are a few options missing from the brand new ones compared to this one. Uh, one main thing that we'll go over is going to be on the ceiling on the top, uh, on the roof on the top, the panoramic roof. This one does not have the opaque uh, ability like the 2023s do, where you hit the button and it just instantly makes the full glass panel on the top opaque. This one just stays full glass, which we'll go over um, in a few minutes. So let's get into the front end styling of this car. All right, guys, so we have the front end of the car right here. We have the brand new headlight design that came in with the new Taycans and kind of the new redesigned look of the Porsches that they've had. Um, 
going in. You can see the nice color on the front. Now this car does offer the carbon fiber package. So along the front end right here, we have full carbon fiber. We have flat black along here. And then there's more carbon fiber that we'll look at on the other side. We have parking sensors located on the front of this car. Radar cruise control. Pretty much a standard at this point with uh, most modern cars, especially one that's electric like this. Um, and then a ton of front end sensors and front end cameras um, along here. And also with the uh, car, it does have the technology pack, hence why it has all the cameras on here. That does give it the full 360 surround view uh, when you're parking and everything like that. So again, it is an extra option. It's about $5,000, but it gives you all the parking sensors along with power folding mirrors and ventilated seats. Now coming into the headlights, they have a really pretty design in here. And then on the top of them, a little uh, writing in there that you can see. And then also on the front end, again, same as the driver's side, is gonna be equal to the passenger side. We do have cutouts. These are functional vents right in here. Helps airflow get through there, cool down the brakes, cool down the wheels, uh, along with helping with aerodynamics. And again, down here, we do have cutouts as well. All active aero in this car. Everything is functional and does have a purpose. Let's go ahead and go up around this car and see what makes this the wagon versus the standard Taycan. All right, guys, so coming onto the side of the car, we do have the wheels over here. They are really big wheels. So one thing about Porsche, if you do not know, is that when a car has yellow calipers like this one does, it does symbolize that it has carbon ceramic brakes compared to the standard um, ceramic brakes. So just one thing to be on the lookout for, if you see yellow calipers, that means it does have the upgraded brakes in it meaning it stops faster. Now this car is a very powerful car, obviously, so it does need carbon ceramic brakes. This car does have an AC permanent synchronous motor, making 560 kilowatts of power, which is equivalent to about 750 horsepower. A great success. So it is definitely not an underpowered electric vehicle. Now that's one of the biggest things that I would say that electric cars kind of have over standard cars is their power output. Something like this is an all wheel drive car. Now this doesn't have a standard transmission like your normal gas powered motor does. This one has a actually, instead of a one speed like most electric cars have, this one actually does feature a two speed transmission um, just to kind of help make it feel a little bit more like a car. So when you're accelerating, you have first gear and it does shift into second gear. When you hit that second gear, that's when it really gives its maximum power output. Zero and lift off to really help you push and propel this car using all, you know, 750 horsepower of it. It's honestly a really fast electric car that will throw you back in your seat, similar to the Plaid and the Model X as well. So on the front end, we have these very large wheels. Um, they are finished in gloss black and they look gorgeous from the outside. Also with these wheels, as I didn't mention before, is these are an added option. These are the 21 inch Cross Turismo wheels. So it is an added option. It's about $1,200 you can get for these wheels and it does feature the gloss black on it too. This car also does feature a gloss black uh, wheel arch on it uh, as standard, as an added option instead of it being flat black or something like that, like this one is or that one is. And then one other cool thing that this car does offer is the charging port. This car does not have just one, but it has two charging ports on it. One on this side and one on the other side. Now here's a little special thing about that. This side has a standard charging port. The other side has a standard charging port and a fast charger. So it has a little bit of the best of both worlds. You don't have to just park on one side of a charger to get access to this one. You do have access on both sides of the car. So no matter where you park this vehicle at an electric charging station, it will be able to charge it. Um, how to access the charging door, you ask? It's actually pretty cool. So we come back a little bit more. You just simply run your hand under it and up it goes. Now again, this is an added option. You have two options. One is to click and open. Another one is to slide your hand under and let it raise up. This one again to close, run your hand underneath it and it closes just like that. It's magic. All right guys, so jumping onto the back end now, this is what really makes it a difference between a standard Taycan versus the Cross Turismo wagon. As you can see, the main difference is obviously this is a wagon. No shit. So as compared to the RS6, as compared to the E63 AMG, this one does have more space in the back, along with um, just a different styling compared to your standard, you know, four-door sedan Taycan. Um, I personally like this look more than I do the other one. Um, I just like the looks of wagons and with something that has this much power, I think it's pretty cool. 
All right, guys, so now we're on the back end of the car. You can really see the difference on that wagon rear end compared to a standard Taycan. Back here as well, we do a few more options on here. We have more carbon fiber down here. Carbon fiber. One with that flat back rear diffuser. Kind of runs all the way along with the carbon fiber on the bottom end of here. We do have a paint matched Taycan badge on here. So right here, the Taycan Turbo S badging is the same as that superior red metallic color. And then we do have the standard Porsche logo back here with that giant LED bar on the back too. Let's go ahead and open up this rear end and let's see what room we have inside. All right guys, so now that we have this opened up back here, we could see the tremendous amount of rear space that this car does offer. It does have a privacy screen up here as well, wrapped in Alcantara with our rear latch close and uh, open features here. Uh, we have some storage down here and some storage over here. We have a 12 blow plug there, a couple of LED lights on those sides as well with the strap over there for storage. Now in here, is the actual battery plug itself. It's strapped down right now on both sides. And here's the battery charger right here. So it's just gonna be able to tell you how much charge this currently has. So you can charge it from home. And that's really it on the back end. Let's go ahead and let's jump inside of the car because on the inside, it's a whole nother world compared to your standard Porsche. Let's give this a close. All right, let's go ahead and close this door. Oh. Oh. All right, guys, so we're now inside of the 2022 Porsche Taycan. It's a really nice feeling in here. Everything in here feels great. It looks phenomenal, in my opinion. That's the biggest thing that I hate about electric cars. You look at Tesla's interior, and I mean, what the hell is that? It's a screen, and there's nothing else. You get in here, you have a speedometer, you have your standard infotainment here. You have a dual screen on here, one here, one for the passenger. And you have a gorgeous screen in the middle too, along with a lot of nice styling here. I get it though. This car is obviously, the price range of this car is completely different than a standard car, but there's still some things that you can put in a standard you know, EV car that this one has, such as a screen on here with the, with the speedometer instead of having everything in the middle. Um, and I know a lot of other electric cars have it too, but you know, Tesla in particular, they just seem to lack on their interior department uh, compared to other cars, which I think is why their sales have been declining too. First of all, in here, we do have this amazing beige color. This is an extra option, of course. Um, it is a $2,500 option. It is the Olea Club leather um, with basalt black and Atacama beige. It again is the technology package, so this does have ventilated along with heated seats. You can see all the perforations in here, uh, along with in the back seats too, which we'll get to momentarily. So you're coming in here, all of the accents are gold. So you get in here, all of the metals in here are gold. You're greeted with carbon fiber on the interior, all over. We have full leather, black leather here. Um, along with the other addition on here, which is the Burmester 3D high-end sound system. This sound system in here is a $6,000 option. Again, it is also matched in that gold as is everything else in here. So we have the vents are lined in the gold with the piano black. The clock in the center even features that beige, same match as this color. And then again, the speakers themselves have that same gold on there. The steering wheel also, has this incredible look on it. It uh, looks like an industrial look. We have the screws along here. We have that gold and it kind of, it's actually see-through. So when you're looking at the steering wheel, you can see through to the other side. So it looks like the toggles on here for your phone calls and your volume adjustments are floating. Um, the steering wheel is also heated and it does have the matte black carbon fiber finish on it again, uh, which is an extra option. Nice. So when you're coming in here, you're greeted with this beautiful screen on the front. We have everything that you can need in here. We have the map system. We have, you know, anything you're gonna need, your volume control, your standard car is gonna have. Jumping on to the right side in here, we have the infotainment screen in the middle. This has all of your general uh, car features in here, your Apple CarPlay, your Android Auto. It's extremely responsive, the touchscreen. Very, very responsive. 
Um, we have all of your general vehicle information here as well. We can go to your vehicle and we can change your drive modes in here. So again, even though this is an EV car, it does feature different drive modes. Same as on the Cayenne that I did in the last video. On the bottom right side of the steering wheel, you give the knob a turn and it will change everything in here. So you'll be prompted on the front screen to go from normal to sport to sport plus which is going to lower your chassis height and change your, your chassis to Sport Plus. And then we have your individual mode where you can kind of customize everything to your liking. Now, featured in the middle screen, again, we have a little bit of an animation feature that goes on here when you're switching between all of the modes. So when you have in here, your normal mode, you have your Porsche being normal. When you go to Sport mode, it turns the wheel a little bit and changes what's around it. And when you go into Sport Plus, it lowers the ride height in an animation on here and it adds a racetrack look around the side of it, which is pretty cool. Also on here, we have an electric sport sound. So this car does generate an actual sound. Again, only when you are in Sport Plus, any other mode, that sound is off. It is a perfectly quiet electric car, but when you wanna have fun, it does generate an artificial sound in here. It's the electric sport. Going into the comfort in here, this car does have ambient lighting, of course. We have different options in the driver's seat and the passenger seat. We have the same balancing, again, as well on here, such as the heating balance and the ventilation balance. Um, again, that is all standard Porsche at this point as with the Cayenne that I did a video with the last time. Now, jumping here into the center screen, this is where all of your climate controls are gonna be. When you come into here, you also have a feature to open up your rear or your front end from here, along with access to the charging ports. But when you jump in here, you're able to access your heating and climate control, your defrosters, your heating and ventilation on your seats and where you wanna put that as well. So it's really nice in here. Everything does have a nice feature. So you, again, when you jump in here, you do have a couple of different options. Um, this car does have a multi-camera system surrounding the car to give you a nice 360 overhead view. So when you're parking this car at least or coming out of a spot, you see exactly how much room you have on each side because you definitely don't wanna damage those rims or any of the carbon fiber finishes around this car. Again, the seats are really comfortable. They feel nice, they look really nice. Everything in here feels nice. So in the center console, we have two large cup holders, very large cup holders. We have a Taycan badge. And then we have an extra option. Again, we have the Turbo S embroidered in the leather wrapped armrest. The Porsche logo is also embroidered on the headrest. This is again, an extra option. Everything is a bit pricey on this car, but it's what you get for you know a luxurious brand such as Porsche. Speaking of prices, we've been going over a lot of the options, um, but I think it's time to get into what the final MSRP of this car would be. Uh, again, this is a 2022, but brand new off the lot. This car was $228,000 for an electric car. Money, 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 money. On here, we have the full Alcantara wrapped headliner. We have Alcantara mirrors. On the rear end seats, we have the same options back here with the ventilated seats. This car also does offer a third seat option. Again, it is not factory like that it is an added option it's the two plus one seat it is five hundred dollars and essentially just adds a third seat belt in there there's no designated third person seat however they add the belt and buckle for that so again at least you can fit five people in here that middle passenger is going to be a little uncomfortable um, but it is okay on the door sills in here and on the floor we have a very nice carpet again embroidered with the porsche logo when you're jumping in here you do have the Taycan turbo s illuminated on the door sill and that is also surrounded by carbon fiber. Again, that's part of the carbon fiber package. So that's really it for the interior of the car. And there's a ton of technology in here that is gorgeous. Let's go ahead and jump into the front room to see with what's been replaced. All right guys, so we're in the front end of the car now. Here's our key again. We're gonna click, open the front button there. It's gonna just open it like that. We're gonna go underneath and hit that latch on here. Here's our latch, give it a lift, and there you go. So again, instead of having a motor on the front end here, we have a frunk, as you will say. Um, we have a full hood right here. It is a very large hood. And then on the front here, mostly everything is covered up. But we do have a relatively decent sized frunk area here. Again, we have all the batteries in here that are kind of covered up. So there's not too much room in here, but at least it adds a little bit more space in here. We have windshield washer fluid. There's a latch. And that's really it for in here. Again, it is all wrapped in carpet. And then we have these hard plastics on here. There's really not too much to being in here. We'll go ahead and give this a close and then we will jump to the final thoughts list. 
All right, guys, so that's gonna wrap up today's video. I really appreciate you all for tuning in and watching this video today. Again, I'm gonna link the listing to this car in the description below. So that's gonna wrap up today's video. I really hope again you all enjoyed. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you're aware of uh, the next times that I post. And I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care, stay safe, stay beautiful, bye.